Hello, everyone. Uh, Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here. Uh, I'm here with Cordell Martin uh, to talk about the most recent episode of Dancing with the Stars, the semifinals, which aired uh, Monday night, last night, as we're recording this on Tuesday night. Um, and first of all, before we talk about the episode itself, uh, we were talking about this for a second before we started recording, that Cordell Martin, going into the last episode of the season, you have the best predictions of season 25 of Dancing with the Stars so far at Gold Derby. Um, you know, just slightly, slightly ahead of me in ninth place. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got some ground to cover. I have, I, but you know, but percentage wise, I'm not all that far off. You know, you have, uh, uh, after 63 questions uh, 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 to, to predict over the course of these uh, nine episodes, you've predicted 71.43 percent correctly and I've predicted 66.67 so I'm exactly basically one in three there we go not bad or two in three two in three. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad so uh so you know first off uh uh, uh how do you do it that is a very good question because this is one of those seasons where it wasn't as predictable um in terms of eliminations uh top scores um, lowest scores uh, seem to change a lot each week. Um, I will say the most constant thing was probably Jordan. Like, you were guaranteed he was probably going to be number one a lot, which proved to be true. But, yeah, it was a very unpredictable season, so I'm very shocked that <laughs> I've done extremely well so far. Yeah, and actually, yeah, you're right about those two factors. Uh, low score was hard to pick because – it, unlike previous seasons, there's always been someone like the who the audience keeps around who you just know is not going to dance very well. So it's like, okay, that's obviously going to be the lowest score whether or not they're eliminated. Uh, this season, everyone, as, as we've talked about before, everyone, for the most part, after a first couple of eliminations, was more or less competent. Like, they, they could kind of hold their own on a good week. Mm -hmm. So there are like five or six people in any given week who could have had the lowest score, uh, or could have had one of the higher scores. Uh, but you're right about Jordan. He was fairly reliable to get one of the highest scores. I think that screwed me up a few times because I kept thinking, okay, no, they're going to go back to Lindsay uh, at some point, you know, to get the high score. Um, and they just haven't as much, especially in these last uh, back half of the season. Uh, right. So so I kind of let that get in the way. And so, ne so now I, I think I'm just habitually picking Jordan to get the highest scores for the last two or two weeks uh, or so. And I'm doing that again the coming week uh, for the finals. Um, so uh, speaking of which, you got another high score on uh, at the semifinals. They performed two routines, uh, one dance with the music uh, picked by the, uh, by the pro dancer. And another dance that was an iconic dance where the celebrities and their pro partners recreated a dance that got perfect tens in a previous season, perfect scores. Uh, Jordan Fisher got a perfect score for his recreation of a perfect scoring dance, and he actually did it much better. Uh, he recreated uh, the, the, the jive by, uh, by uh, Mark Ballas, actually, uh, his competitor with Lindsey Sterling this season, uh, Mark Ballas and Paige Van Zant. Uh, just three seasons ago, season 22, so less than two years ago. So that was really fresh in mind. Um, after his quick step in Trio Night uh, brought the house down, I was not surprised at all that his jive did the same, maybe even more so. Uh, what do you think about that dance? Yeah, um, just looking at all of the iconic dances um, and that were selected, I felt that Jordan's was the only one that I felt would be able to surpass the iconic dance and become iconic itself. Um, so I wasn't surprised. I mean, the jive is up his alley. He's young. He's fit. Um, he moves really well can move with quick movements as seen with the quick step um, and Argentine tango. So I wasn't shocked by his score at all. Yeah, and, and, and those uh, those iconic dances were, were some of them were pretty tricky. Uh, you had Drew Scott trying to to to, to replicate um, who who is he trying to? It was someone completely uh, Corbin Blue. Yeah, completely unlike him, um, which is a benefit or or, or not. Uh, uh, in his case, not so much. Um, it didn't. And and what surprised me about his uh, that was a jazz routine, I believe. Um, 
was one of the best things about Drew Scott has been his ability to bring the entertainment, even when the steps aren't always there. In this case, it looked like he didn't seem that happy. He, he, he didn't feel like he was comfortable in that dance at first. No. Uh, he got a little bit better as it went along towards the end. Uh, and then there was that insane lift where he was swinging uh, uh, Emma Slater by the legs. That was just... Made me nervous. <laughs> It was successful in that she survived uh, without injury, um, but yeah, terrifying uh, and, and insane. Um, but yeah, he just he didn't seem to have as much of fun as he's had before. So I actually think that might hurt him going into next week, where you know, he didn't have that fun-loving energy, even though he had that fun-loving dance. Yeah, and um, to your point, I felt maybe after the harsh criticism that he received from the judges the week prior. Maybe he just felt that, okay, my time is up. This is it for me. It is what it is. And I think once he realized like, oh crap, I'm in the finals, but my score sucks. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's also, you know, we talked about there being no one who was consistently at the bottom because everyone was so evenly matched, but it got the last week or two, it got to the point where all of a sudden he might be starting to realize, oh, I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's that guy who keeps getting the low scores, who's not who's not really keeping up with the other competitors, but he keeps getting voted through. Um, you know, some people don't care, like you know, David Ross, uh, you know, and they just keep having fun anyway. Um, but 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 Drew, I, I and, and he's genuinely trying. I actually think he's a better dancer than David Ross was last season. Um, you know, when he's on, he's like, re he can be really spot on. He makes great use of, of his very long limbs uh, uh, in terms of creating shapes, especially on elegant dances like waltzes and, 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 and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so, so I think he's, he's good. I, I agree he's not at the level of the other three finalists now when they're at their best. I mean, Frankie is a little uneven at times, um, but when Frankie is on, he's on fire. Uh, and of course, Jordan is amazing and Lindsay is yeah, also you know, through the roof uh, fantastic as well. So, so Drew really does stick out like a sore thumb out of this top, top four. So I, I hope he's not feeling too much like that guy. He kind of is, but it's not his fault and, and Honestly, you know, Victoria Arlen was eliminated. She, I, I might have put her through instead of Drew, but at the same time, they were, I, I wouldn't say they, she was too far ahead of him in terms of quality throughout the season. Yeah, I felt like for both of them, they peaked really early. And, you know, with certain celebrities and their dance um, ability, some can rise to the occasion, you see the improvement continue, and some they just hit their peak and it just kind of you know just kind of mellow out you know throughout the rest of the competition i felt both of them they're kind of on the same path and dance level and um it was just a matter of fan basis between the two of them and he had the bigger fan base yeah and and even though uh, uh victoria had the inspirational story uh, and she had Val, Val Tchmerkovsky, who's, who's an incredibly popular pro, so popular, in fact, that this is the first time in several seasons that he's been voted out before the finals. Uh, in, like, I think the last six seasons, he made the finals, I think, five times, and the only exception was with Tamar Braxton because she had to withdraw from the competition, so he wasn't even voted out. He had to leave the competition because of her, her health issues. Um, so, so this is the first time they, the, the voters sent him home, uh, this early in a, in a, in a few seasons. Uh, so, so, but I mean, he, he was, he was due. He, he got 13 contestants. He made it to fifth place. That's, that's a solid, solid, uh, result. Uh, I'm sure people like Keo and Artem look at that and go like, oh, why, why couldn't I get that far? <laughs> like, can you just make it above sixth place, please? Like, make it fourth, please? <laughs> Both of them, actually. I don't think either of them has cracked higher than, than sixth since no. they've been on Dancing with the Stars, although Artem, at least, has won Strictly Come Dancing in the UK, uh, the British version. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, Val, you know, sometimes it always, doesn't always work out. Derek Huck figured that out in his last season with, uh, with Mary Lou Henner. 
Uh, I think they finished sixth. Yep. Uh, which was his worst showing in – might have been tied for his worst or one of his worst showings on the show uh, since he's so consistently – Yeah. It's really good. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, and, and you know, you got someone, Lindsay Arnold, who's partnered with Jordan Fisher, could win the Mirabal Trophy. It would be her first. So that would be, that would be very nice to see. Um, now, uh, one other very important thing that happened in the semifinals, and I think you'll agree this was the most important development in Dancing with the Stars history, uh, Frankie Muniz took a shirt off. Um, <laughs> he threatened, well, he, he either promised or threatened, depending on your, your viewpoint. Um, you know, we found out in a clip package last week that he told his partner, Whitney Carson, you know, if I make it past a certain point in the competition, I'll take my shirt off. And he, I, I'm sure thinking he would never make it that far in the competition, but he did, and then some. So, uh, you know, in, in their first dance of the night, uh, a, this, a salsa dance, um, he had like a, a leather jacket or something. It was this hip hop kind of salsa. And at the end of it, you know, you know, she pulled, grabbed his shirt and it was a tear away shirt. So, you know, Frankie <laughs> Muniz and all his glory. Um, uh, you know, you're welcome, America. Uh, <laughs> what were your thoughts on 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 that dance, that moment, and um, and and Frankie in general? You know, Frankie, like I've mentioned since his uh, week one dance, is he's just the contestant that you root for. He's the contestant that each week you tune in to see his growth and his journey. Um, I think he resonates with the audience um, and he's an entertainer. With him being an actor, he has a leg up on how to engage the audience. You know, whether it's his uh, creepy jazz routine that he did or um, as Pirates of the Caribbean, Argentine Tango, like he knows how to develop the character and really sell it. Although he's not the best dancer, but he knows how to entertain. And I thought his salsa was much better than I expected because I thought it was going to be a hot mess like his jazz routine and uh, his samba. But he pulled it off. He had a little swag going on. So yeah, and the whole shirt thing, it was bound to happen. I mean, you know, you can't be a male celebrity on Dance Stars and not take off your shirt at this point. So, yes, George, that's the, the surprising thing. We This season's male uh, uh, celebrities, you've had Frankie Muniz shirt off, uh, Drew Scott shirt off a couple times, uh, uh, Terrell Owens, you couldn't get keep a shirt on that guy. Um, <laughs> and yet, we have, like, Jordan Fisher, who is young, fit, in shape, all that sort of stuff, he hasn't taken his shirt off. No, he's like, What's up with that, Jordan Fisher? I know. He's like, you guys are going to watch me dance, and you're going to love it. End of story. <laughs> no. <laughs> the closest he came was, was like, that shirt opened, like, three buttons down for his salsa, his trio salsa with Corbin Blue. That's all you get, America. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll be on the runway for Project Runway. They have a fully modest designer this season, so he'll be dressed in, in her, her outfit. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, talk about uh, Lindsay Sterling for a moment. Uh, uh, you predicted going into the show that she would have a perfect night at last. This poor woman, she has only gotten, not poor woman, she's been consistently one of the highest scorers every week, uh, almost every week. Uh, uh, you know, always thwarted by Jordan by a couple of points, and this week was no exception. I think he was ahead of her by one, just one or two points uh, overall. <clears throat> and she's only ever gotten one perfect score, which is surprising. She's gotten lots of tens, but never, th you know, almost never three in a row. And, and that week she actually got four in a row because Shania Twain was uh, guest judging that night. Um, so she has not gotten another perfect score again. She had a great contemporary dance uh, at the beginning of, of the semifinals. And the only reason to do a contemporary dance is to get easy tens. That's why they made it. Uh, <laughs> that's the whole point. Whoever created the contemporary dance style did it so people could get tens on Dancing with Stars, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and so 10 from Carrie Ann, 10 from Bruno, 9 from Len. N Len, man. <laughs> 
I just don't, I don't know. It's really odd because normally if they have someone at such a high standard, like a Nicole Scherzinger or Normani or X, Y, and Z, they tend to make it a little bit more competitive by, you know, giving other people, you know, their moment in the sun with the perfect scores. And you would have thought by now Lindsay would have received her fair share of perfect scores, but I just don't know if the judges aren't really feeling her like that, or maybe she's actually running away with the votes. And producers are kind of like, oh, we'll just push her to the back until finale weekend. And it's like, oh, wow, look, you're so amazing. Um, so it's very interesting. And going into the finals, like, I'm a little concerned that maybe he could end up in third place. Because, I mean, Frankie's really gaining momentum. And if we learned anything after last season is the best dancers don't always win or come in second. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I you know we talked about you know Drew and Victoria whether they peak too soon. In a way, I wonder if if uh, uh, Lindsay did uh, at least in terms of the score. I think she's still progressing as a dancer. Um, uh, but you know after that Argentine tango on movie night, that sci-fi robotic Argentine tango that just blew everyone away. I think it's still one of the one or two or three best dances of the entire season. Um, she hasn't gotten a perfect score again. It's just been like one point off or two points off or, yeah. And there's always a little bit of something, even though Jordan keeps, you know, you know, even if they don't always love Jordan's dances, they, they've given him four or five uh, perfect scores this season already. Um, and, you know, they've only given her one. So I would think if she's really running away with the votes, then it's going to look bad if they keep holding her scores down and she ends up winning the competition. Uh, because then it's going to be like, well, you guys kept stacking the deck for Jordan, and then it's going to be this weird anti-climax when, oh, and the winner is Lindsay, uh, you know, yeah. who got one perfect score during the season. She topped the leaderboard maybe twice, you know. You know where did that come from? And, and so I, I, I would hope that they would try and keep that a bit more competitive by keeping her up with him, because I think she's been at his level for most of the season. I mean... I, I, I would agree with the judges last night in the sense that I don't think either of her two routines was the showstopper that his uh, uh, jive was. Um, but, you know, still, that, that contemporary could have gotten a perfect score. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree with no perfect score for the tango. I think she was handicapped by uh, the fact that, uh, as Carrie Ann and Abba uh, pointed out, she doesn't have the same kind of chemistry with Mark that uh, Meryl had with Max, and on that particular dance, that that you know that dance, that song, that that particular choreography, um, it, it wasn't going to play exactly the same way, and and so I think that kind of hampered them a bit, uh, and and I I don't think it came off quite as well, even though <clears throat> I you know I'm, I'm not a dance expert, but I couldn't find anything wrong with it. It just didn't have the impact that maybe she could have had with a more compatible iconic mm -hmm. routine. No, I agree. And then um, to your point, I I felt like with some of the couples, maybe the pros were confused as to what exactly, you know, they had to do for the iconic dance. If it was more of following the routine from start to finish or just use the same music and the same costumes. Like some took liberties in terms of the choreography and some actually mimic you know, the exact choreography. And so I think Mark and Lindsay messed up where they kind of mimic what Meryl and Max did as opposed to put their own spin on it, so. Yeah, it would have been, uh, it would have been interesting to see, because uh, uh, I, I vaguely remember Meryl Davis's season. Uh, uh, and I remember Meryl Davis ha and, and Max had a contemporary that was extraordinary. I think they had like this really contentious, like volatile, you know, couple Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think I think Lindsay and Mark would have just destroyed that. I think that would have been extraordinary if that if they if that had been their contemporary and then maybe their first dance was something else. Uh, uh, I, I think that would have been fantastic, or maybe their first dance could have been a tango, and she they could have put an entirely uh, unique spin on it because it would have they wouldn't have been uh, uh, trying to do an iconic routine. Um, so so now we're going to the finals. Um, obviously, Drew Scott is going to be the Mirrorball champion, right? Oh God, no. No, no. 
His time will be up on Monday night. Mark my words. The final three will be between Frankie, Lindsay, and Jordan. In terms of who wins, I think it's going to be Jordan and Lindsay. Um, especially with Lindsay, since she hasn't won before. I mean, Jordan has just been a clear favorite from start. And also, he's starting to become more vulnerable. Like, he was really emotional last night, and it caught me by surprise. Because normally, he kept a wall up, but last night, he's really vulnerable and, you know, really expressed that he really wants to win this for Lindsay. And the fact that she injured herself and still went out there like a pro, I mean, you got to give the girl her props and her due, so... Yeah, her her injured leg and his apparently scratched cornea. Like everyone was so accident prone, and yet the person who didn't get hurt was Emma Slater swinging around by her legs. On her <laughs> spot. It's like that was that was tempting fate a little bit too much. I think it'll be interesting. It'll come down uh, possibly, and I think this happened last season. Um, uh, it hurt Normania and it helped Rashad um, and helped uh, David Ross uh, get up into second place. Is the freestyle. That's going to decide a lot, and you know, looking at these finalists, I mean, Lindsay, of, uh, Lindsay Arnold, of course, was in the finals with David Ross and choreographed that great routine to his perfect strengths, um, which aren't necessarily dance related, uh, <laughs> um, and and got that second place finish. And and Normani had kind of like this subdued dance that didn't really it was beautifully danced, but it just didn't have a wow factor. Um, the good news is that Mark Ballas knows wow fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so so if, if Mark wants to win that mirror ball for, for Lindsay and they're still, they're still within striking distance, all, all they need, he needs to do is get Lindsay within striking distance of Jordan's score. And she has the capability to outdo Jordan's score potentially because she's done it before in the past. She's done perfect routines in the past. Um, that's all, that's all she needs is, you know, if she has a perfect night in the finals and has a showstopper choreographed uh, uh, freestyle dance, uh, that could be enough to, to overtake him. True. And it also depends on who has that pimp slot, as I like to call it, in the finale. Um, and then usually you could tell the judges, whoever they give that slot to is normally the winner or has the best freestyle that they like to save for last. And looking at the four finalists, I'm sure they're probably saving that for Jordan. Because he didn't go last this week. Frankie did. So. Yeah, Frankie went last this week, so it's definitely not going to be Frankie. No. Uh, and they're not going to give that to Drew, I don't think. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, so it will be Lindsay or, or Jordan. I can't remember who last had the, the, the pimp slot. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think Jordan did uh, two weeks ago. Uh, uh, he performed last, I think, the trio dance and, you know, that, that night. So, oh, so, you know, maybe, could be Lindsay. Possibly. So, depending on whoever gets that slot, will kind of steer some direction as to who the producers think is probably going to win. Well, with that mystery, um, I'm sure we'll be back next week to talk about uh, uh, who ultimately wins the Mirabal Trophy. Um, and we'll have lots of thoughts about that as we anticipate season 26 of Dancing with the Stars. I don't know if it will be back this spring or maybe next summer or fall because we've got American Idol coming up in the spring on ABC. I don't know how that scheduling is going to work out just yet. Um, but either way, uh, uh, fingers crossed for next week. Uh, thank you, Cordell, for joining me. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week.